Welcome back is all I can say for those of you who are here in person. And for those of you who are at home, we hope to see you here again in the not too distant future. We're probably gonna wait to see if any of us get sick. Uh, tonight's competition theme is open. We have a total of uh, 36 images, I think. Yeah, that's right. Kind of a low turnout, but that's good because we used up part of our time messing around. Uh, our three judges tonight, before I get too much farther, are Debbie Cole, Karen Linbaugh, and Patrick St. Sin. Patrick is here in the audience. You can stand up, let everybody know who you are. Uh, Karen, if you'll say something, everybody will see your face. Hello, everybody. There she is. Okay. And uh, Debbie is out of town and sounds like she couldn't connect. So I'm going to read her comments uh, to you. All right. Um, so I think what we'll do at this point is see if I can share my screen. Too. The basic class, we have six images, so there will be two awards, and we'll go through them. First is Little Miss Zombie. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's hiding. <laughs> Path to the Light. Unexpected Encounter. Little Hulk, <coughs> Chevy, and Metro Maternity. All right, so. Now we're going to go through these uh, with the judges' comments. So, okay, the first one, Little Miss Zombie, was one of. Uh, you went Cole. to another. Whoops. Yeah, it's, it, it's scrolling. Yeah, it is. Let's see if I can keep it from doing that. That looks better. Okay, Little Miss Zombie. And then again, this is Debbie Cole's thoughts on the image. Who doesn't love a good Day of the Dead costume and makeup for Halloween? Nice use of lighting to catch your face, which is the real story in this photo. A bucket of candy does give it a sense of place. But again, I love the story of her face. The houses and sky in the rear give a really nice awkward in quotes touch to the background no way to eliminate the trees but these distract a bit from her gorgeousness okay i noticed i got a little internet instability sign up there is everybody still with us yes okay good all right so that was little miss zombie now the next image is path to the light and that should be Karen. Yes. So I really like this photo. Um, and I like the depth of field. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfectly. Um, and I like that it was processed in black and white. I think it gives it um, a, a sort of an eeriness to the story. And um, but there, there's one bright spot toward the back of the steps up in the trees. And I probably would have taken that one little bright spot out. Um, other than that, I like the photo a lot. I just think there's a great story to it. Um, it was processed well, it's in focus. And um, there's not much that I would change except for that one spot of bright light. Okay, thanks, Karen. 
Okay, next is unexpected encounter, and that should be Patrick. Yeah, um, so I like the capture of this cap. It's very nice. Uh, I'm a uh, technical freak, so I like the fact that it was very sharp in his eyes. The whiskers and his ear hair were also very sharp. Uh, I would have probably burned down or suggest that you might burn down the foreground, uh, would have added a little greater impact to the image and brought the, brought the cat itself out. Perhaps layering um, the cat from the background separately would allow you to bring that cat out a bit stronger while darkening the overall background. Uh, I know it broad daylight's hard to photograph in, um, but overall very nice shot. Uh, Post-processing might have helped just a slight bit more. Okay, thanks Patrick. Next image is Little Hulk. And that is Debbie again. And Debbie says, very cute capture. I love the arrangement of the subject, observer, and background. The story is a Mr. Green, and in my opinion, could use more light or focus on his great green grimace rather than his abs. Just a bit more balance. The layering is super front to back. I'm so curious about the expression on the observer's face and would love to see it or darken it altogether. The fading light is so interesting. And again, I'm curious as to what is going on in the house. Colors rock in this image. Okay. Next. Chevy. Karen? Mine. So the viewer knows exactly what kind of car this is and that we are looking at the trunk uh, without having to show more of the vehicle um, itself. And I do like that. Um, the design above the logo, I think adds a really nice um, design interest to the photo. And I think it has really nice cropping. Um, I just, and I didn't put this in my other comments, but the white background, I, I think if it could, if I were gonna do it, I, I might test out uh, doing a linear gradient on it, maybe just a little bit, um, but everything else is nice and crisp and, and I, I think it's very clear uh, what the, uh, the photographer was trying to get across to us. And number six of six is Metro Maternity. And Patrick, is that you? Yep, that's okay. me. Yeah, this is a, a fair, this is a, a pretty cool concept. I like the image. Um, I mean, getting a, a pregnant woman, perhaps it's your wife, I'm not sure, or model to dress up and stand out in the middle of a busy road. It looks like it's in New York, maybe New York City. Um, I commend you for that. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, um, I think that's pretty, pretty sharp in itself. Uh, compositionally, uh, I, I would have probably tried to get the model to move closer to being uh, dead center on the double yellow lines and move the camera along with it so that you've got this nice symmetric kind of uh, image going on. Um, I'm a fan of layers and I probably would have uh, modeled, uh, had the model layered out and then work the background a little bit more uh, so that you could highlight her slightly more. Uh, overall, a very nice concept, well executed, uh, given the fact that you're on a busy New York uh, road uh, where this seems to be taken. All right, so that's it for the uh, basic group uh, this evening. Six images and uh, Let's see what the judges decided. So, uh, as I said earlier, since there are only six images, we don't award more than 25% of the images. So, in this case, there will be two. There'll be a first and second place. Let's see if we pick the right ones now. 
Okay, it worked. Second place, Chevy, Harley Pfeiffer. Mitch, your car? It's Georgetown Piston Show. <laughs> so what kind of thoughts were you having when you took this? I was just trying to capture something, a detail on those cars. I mean, there were so many cars. And I guess I just kind of started zooming in on those emblems that were but I like this one because of the symmetry and, and the added little decal that's above. So, well, it's such an iconic uh, logo, you know, especially for those of us of a certain age. And uh, it's hard to see this without seeing the whole car. It just because that represents that car. And so yeah. that's it's really cool. Very well done. And first place. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I like facing it. Right um, I took this the same day, Mary Day Long and I went down to a park that was down on the San Gabriel River. And these are the steps that kind of led down onto the trail. Um, I did change it from color to black and white. That's really good. Well, it's not fair getting married to special secret places, but <laughs> no, she she had no input on my photo. Okay. <laughs> she was taking other pictures. <laughs> you know, she was in her area, I was in my, but it was just kind of fun. Very cool. Well, thank Nicely you. Nicely done. Thank you. All right. So we made it through the basic now. Smooth sailing the rest of the way, hopefully. Oh no, I forgot oh, to do the eight people's choice. Worked not to work. All right, bronze, Clay Laban for Little Big Friday. Yeah. 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 So, was this one of your guests or a family member? Or well, I was. Uh, um, uh, my neighborhood doesn't have children coming door to door as much, so I went over to a friend's house, and they're in a new subdivision, and uh, they have lots of children coming by. So we just sit on the front steps, and as the kids come up, the parents are usually there, and we snap a few pictures. This is with an iPhone. Oh, cool. Yeah, good. It Plus, it was processed a bit, so yeah. it could work on that. Yeah, so you got some you difficult lighting anything? situation here. Um, that was the porch lighting behind me, uh, so it was not the iPhone uh, flash. Okay. So Did you get a model release? No, <laughs> the parents are there. Yeah, so silver. The silver uh, medal goes to Arlie Fiver. <laughs> and the gold goes to Sabrina Lunsford for Unexpected Encounter. <laughs> That unexpectedly. Sabrina, are you out there? We were with her last weekend. That was totally unexpected, just like the caption. Yeah. She just uh, wheeled around and was able to get the shot. Where was that? Uh, remember where she said? She, she travels quite a bit around all over Texas. It was somewhere. Yeah, maybe around us. Okay. We're going to move. Oops, that's wrong. Move on to the uh, intermediate class. Okay. 14 images in this category. First is reaching for the moon. Rising from the depths. Objects may be smaller than they appear. <laughs> Red explosion. <laughs> Bellying up to the bar. Old wood.
waddle this way. Don't waddle this way. Walk this way. <laughs> you remember the milk. <laughs> <laughs> Little people. Red shouldered hawk. Cruising along. The visitor. Calm before the action. Childish monks. Okay, so we'll go through them again. Now with judges comments, judges, I had you send me your picks and they left them at home. So when, you're, when yours comes up, just jump in there and take it away. Okay, so the first image. Reaching for the moon. Uh, make sure that's it wasn't Debbie. Let's see. It was Debbie. All right. Um nature. Okay, nature for any nature is gorgeous. The slightly lit branches and twigs add a beautiful extra dimension to this. Thank you to the model, the moon, for being totally full on this night. And thank you to the leaves for being present. Okay, uh, so anyway. Looks like you're frozen. Yeah, the We're frozen. Oh, now you're okay. And you, okay. You're good now. All right. Okay. Image number two, rising from the depths. That's me. Okay. Um, I like this, this photo a lot. Um, it certainly makes you wonder what exactly we're looking at. Um, you know, from the ripples, we know that it's water. It, Definitely makes me wonder if those little round things were eyes. Um, and uh, I like the warmth of the red tones. Um, and even though the subject isn't readily identifiable, I find that it's very interesting. And um, I think the only thing that I would think that I might have done is to crop it up from the bottom like an inch from you know from it uh, just up, up a little bit um, and it would just bring in that subject a little bit more but I really like this photo photo a lot and I like the lighting um, that was done on the uh, red aspects of the photo it's really nice Hey, thanks, Karen. Next. Okay, objects may be smaller than they appear. Patrick. Yeah, uh, nice alligator. I mean, uh, nice alligator. Nice alligator. I mean, really, <laughs> sweetheart. Look at that smile. You can't pass that up. So um, I like the sharpness in the eyes, the good detail in the in the face, uh, the skin. You can start. You can actually see all the the uh, what we perceive as the alligator skin on your boots. Well, there it is. Um, so uh, again, I like layering things. I would have uh, layered out the uh, layered the alligator from the background and uh, treated the background a little bit differently and, and brought it down so that it wasn't so bright. Uh, I really wanted to see more of the face of the alligator. Um, the only other thing on the alligator itself was the tail. Uh, I probably would have burned that down just a little bit uh, because it's out of focus, uh, which is understandable. I, I believe 
the data said this was an 800 millimeter uh, lens that photographed this. So um, you're, you know, it's great that, that the eyes and the teeth are actually as sharp as they are. Um, so that was uh, basically that. I, I just, uh, by post-processing, I probably would have uh, liked to have seen the, the alligator's face stand out as more of the center of the composition instead of the white striations in the background. So otherwise, I congratulations. I think it's a fantastic image. Uh, you know, so. OK. Next, red explosion. All right, this is Debbie's. And she was very wordy on this one. I want this on my wall. What a gorgeous image and so much fun too. <laughs> but she, uh, she liked, uh, she thought it displayed the peak of action, good use of colors, uh, good use of light, uh, sharpness in critical areas, adds to the impact and strong composition. She, she really liked the way this whole thing was set up. And uh, that is uh, unique. So, so now, Bellying up to the bar. Uh, Sharon, did you critique this one? I critique, but I didn't. I mean, you, know, I mean, you don't have an oral critique for this one. No, I don't, but I can give one if you need it. No, no, we're just going to do the usual three apiece, but I just want to make sure. Old wood. Okay. Waddle this way. Okay, I have some comments from uh, Debbie. Gotta shake your tail feathers. I'm in total awe of all photographers capturing birds and beasts, other than human beasts. Love this guy's face and feathers. Love the simple background of sand and sea slash sky. In my opinion, I would have loved a bit of action on his or her part, but hey, everyone has to rest on occasion. Okay. And did you remember the milk? Okay. Little people. Let's see. Okay. Um, so I, um, I think that this is a fantastic shot. The graphic. Uh, ability of this or, or, or the feel of this. Um, the building itself is, is well photographed. Uh, obviously, it's a white or gray interior with the light just pouring in on the sides. Um, that, was, that was really quite a fantastic shot. And having all the people down there in their various shades of whatever color they had on, but treating this as black and white was fantastic. Um, it, it, very much as the story conveys uh, the little people in a space that just dwarfs them immensely. Um, the only, uh, most technical issues can be ignored because of the comp strong composition of this thing, I believe. Um, a minor detail would be when I got a chance to look at it really close up, if there was a way to get a little more depth of field so that the balcony at the rear, I know it's a pain, uh, maybe boost the ISO so you could close down a little more, uh, but that was about it. Otherwise, I believe it's a, it's a fantastic image. Okay, thanks for those comments. Mm -hmm. Next, red-shouldered hawk. Okay, Debbie. And... Um, what an eye and what talent to capture this hawk in repose. I'm in awe of the perfect depth of field to, to highlight this little guy as the star of the show. For me, I might have cropped in a tiny bit more to really show him or her off. I love that uh, he she is a bit off center, like many of us are, and uh, may even have set him a tad more to the right. What an image. Okay. Cruising along. That would be me. 
Um, I, I like this image a lot. Uh, I know how difficult they can be to get. I've tried it myself. Um, he's, the bird is well focused, uh, except that I think, and I didn't, again, write this, but I would speak it now is, um, I, I would layer, use the, um, one of the layers in Lightroom to sort of put a highlight right on the back of him, just so he stands out a little bit more. And I probably would, I like the fact that there's a shorter distance from where he's come from and the longer distance, it's well balanced uh, so that you know he's flying ahead. And I just would have um, lightened up the, the background and the water just a little bit if I were gonna keep him as dark as he is, just to make him stand out a little bit more and not blend into the background quite so much. Great, great photo. And you can see the eyes in focus and you can see some of the detail on the feathers on his neck. Just nice. Somebody knew what they were doing. Yes, I wish I could do that. The visitor. That's me. Okay. Um, wow. What a powerful pink rose that is. Um, the, uh, the color is almost unnatural, uh, but it, I've, I've seen images like that before myself, and I've shot them similar to that, so I understand. Uh, probably the one thing that I would suggest is cropping in a little closer to the rose and less background because the visitor is is already dwarfed by the rose and then you it's dwarfed even further by the background so that would have been my only thing there um, the the sharpness of the petals of the rose against the green is i'm not sure if it's um something that's in the layering that was done, but perhaps if that's the case, then perhaps a, a little Gaussian blur on that layer at, on the edges might have helped just to make it a touch more natural. But again, cropping in would probably have been the, the thing that I would have done, but otherwise uh, nice colors, uh, everything else. Very good. Okay. Calm before the action. This is Debbie Cole again. Uh, this image shows a real sense of power set against a soft background. I feel a real contrast. The light through the cockpit glass is stunning. Those darn little directional signals uh, in the front of the image to the right uh, are a little, uh, lost my, Or take the okay. These uh, the directional signs for takeoff and landing uh, are essential for taking take off and landing, but they do distract from from the subject, which which is the airplane. Uh, I'm wishing for a little more light to really see the detail in the planes, but the contrast between the cockpit and the body is nice. Great job. And the last image in this category is Childish Monks. Um, Me? And I, I really like this uh, shot. Um, it's really well composed. Uh, I like the subtle light on the faces of the boys and it, it just draws your eye to them. Um, and the white background is subdued, yet it, it has fluctu fluctuations in the tone, which I think add to it. Um, it just gives us a, a sense of place um, that it seems to be this older monument type uh, structure. And uh, the only uh, item I find distracting in the photo is that blurred white 
line or a post on the right hand side. Um, the fact that it's blurred is good, but I it can't really be taken out because if it was, then part of the hand of the one little boy um, would have been removed. So I just think it was one of those choices, you either leave it in focus or you blur it a little bit. So I, I do like that they did that, but I, I like the light coming in through the umbrella. Um, it, it's just really nice. Um, you know, you can see that the two boys care for one another. It's, and the fact that the one little boy had, I'm just noticing this really now, has his toes curled up, um, just adds some whimsy to the, to the photo. So, uh, fantastic photo. I just love whoever did it. Okay, thank you. And that, folks, is the intermediate division. So we're going to take a look at what the judges decided. So, uh, honorable mention goes to Donna Smith for cruising along. I got, I think somebody wants to take your class. On, <laughs> is that a reddish? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Very beautiful bird. Uh, third place goes to Nick Grossman for Childish Monks. Second place goes to Roberto White for Red Shoulder Lock. Where did you do that? Where did you take this? In, right here in the West Branch near the okay. church. Yeah. Cool. The yeah. Church at the entrance here from the park area. First place, this can't be Ed Pete. <laughs> Uh, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> a lot of it. It's red fluorescent ink. I uh, dropped in the water <clears throat> and uh, lit with UV light. And then turned Can't hear light. him. Sorry. I'll get this. It's a uh, red fluorescent ink. Uh, dropped into water, lit with UV light, and then turned upside down. And uh, I did learn one thing when doing this. Lightroom uses a different color profile in uh, its develop module than it does in its uh, library module. I developed this in, in Lightroom. When I went back to the library module, it was totally flat. Basically, so I looked online and it said that Lightroom uses Photo Pro in the develop module, but it uses RGB in in the library module. So I had to redevelop it for RGB. Is that, is that a candle behind it? Or no, it's it's UV light. The bulb. It's a bulb. No, no, it's a flash, a UV flash. A uh, UV flash. Wow. Very well, nice. Very nice. And upside down. Very, yeah, yeah. Like that, that's, that's probably right. it would make the whole picture. Such a mushroom cloud. No. I like some. Dissolving jellyfish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. That, uh, Debbie wants it for her wall. That's right. <laughs> she can have it. Small piece. Yeah. Yeah. Making money. Prize money. Don't give it away. And the people's yeah. choice for the intermediate class. The bronze goes to. Nick Grossman for Little People. Very interesting image. Okay. Well, not the state, I think that's the 9 11 memorial in New York. Oh, really? I think you're said. right. Uh, uh, well, I was wondering where this was. Great perspective. Now. Yeah. I found a good place to take a picture. Uh, second, Silver is Jim McDaniel. <laughs> Very 
things in focus. So I wonder if that's Is that a composite. A composite, because mm -hmm. that's really hard to do. Both the moon and the tree are in focus. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. 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 And the trees are not going to show it. Gold medal. Yeah. Goes to Nick Grossman. I'm wondering if this candid or if these kids do these 4,000 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's got a great effect. Okay. So now we get to the final category of the evening. The other classification. <laughs> and uh, most of you will remember that the advanced class is judged by one of our uh, PSA judges. And uh, so, I think you're going to have to read the judges. <laughs> For us blind people in the back. I could do that, uh, but if it, was, if it was exceptionally wordy, I may not see this. It'll cut off the last words. So we're going to go to judges. Initial survey requirements. Um, we may have to edit this to show the critique do that all at once. Uh, any critiques? So we'll just go through any ones then with the critique. So there are 16 images in this class. Uh, first one is, and Damon Williams is our guest judge. You know what? You have I, bio? I think I'm going to show them all without critiques first so you can see them big. Yeah. This is kind of small. Alaska Wild. It's amazing. Back, looks better, bigger. Flight of the Harrier. Coyote, not a wolf. Near total lunar eclipse, 2021. Sunset in paradise. Lunch watchers. Heads or tails. Say ah. Upon arriving in Narnia. Wings of winter. Safety in numbers. Fishing. Untitled. Surf diving. Uh, 
on the hunt. Magical lady slipper. Five. Okay, so we'll go through with the comments. All right. Um, so Damon felt that uh, this image instilled emotional reaction, the sharpness in critical areas added to impact, it was a strong composition, but needed a little less cropping. Because it looked like a strong nature image to me. For me, the detail around the eye jumps out immediately, which adds tons of visual and emotional impact for me. Detail all around the face is crisp, which speaks to appropriate point of focus, good use of depth of field, and at this focal range, appropriate stabilization. Composition works well for me. Placing the bird on the right side of the frame while looking left provides a living space for a breathing room that, at least for me, can create a more pleasing composition. The featureless background highlights the subject well, in my opinion, and it looks like the maker was even conscious to put the eye on a crap on a, uh, I think in that cross pose. Uh, using uh, rule of thirds. Um, next is Flight of the Harrier. Uh, displays good peak of action, good cropping, good use of light and sharpness in critical areas added to impact. Crystal. Oh, that's the bird. Oh, it's the bird. Right. Yeah. I thought it was a bug you <laughs> Looks like a nice nature image to me. Subject is sharp, meaning, meaning all the maker settings work together and which really adds to the visual impact. Nice placement in the frame for me with lots of breathing room and living space, but nice and tight with ample capture of the subject. I compliment the maker on getting the subject heading into the sun and catching the lit side of the bird's face, which even snags the catch lights. Background is sufficiently soft not to be a distractor, and it doesn't detract from the subject. I feel like there's been just a bit too much editing here, probably in exposure, but maybe in sharpening. Take a look at the left wing and the white spot on the tail. Um, and I don't have the so I apologize, but it'll be in the comments uh, attached to this picture. And it was uh, in, the work, in the library of the author. Okay, next is Coyote Not a Wolf. And um, good use of light, sharpness in critical areas adds to impact, the background is distracting. Um, we'll get to that. Good nature shot. The uh, fur looks really sharp and textured to me, and I like the texture and tonality of it, so kudos on point of focus. Depth of field, exposure settings, and keeping everything stable. By stable, he's talking about camera shape using an image stabilized lens or body or both. Getting a full frontal shot of the subject's face and some acknowledgement of the camera really adds impact for me, especially against the nearly perfect background. Uh, I really like the composition. Having the animal framed by those two tufts of plants is just killer, in my opinion. This is a double edged sword, though, in that the rear quarter of the subject is also obscured which I'd really change if I could. Having said that, I realize that the coyotes don't take posing direction well, 
So you get what you get, but it wouldn't it be nice to see the entire animal? And now we get to the part I wish I do remember we talked about that. This background is distracting. This is his opinion. He's talking about these two bright lines in the background that you know are probably reflections on the on snow crests. And uh, his opinion was that was uh, you know distracting. Uh, and other judges may feel differently. Uh, I know I would, but the lawyer said perfect background. <laughs> look, look further down. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. background is distracting. Nearly perfect. Yeah. Background. So. Well, I think he's saying both. <laughs> Nearly perfect. That's the key word. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's talking yeah. about the and Yeah, I think he feels that those lines distract from the other ones. Background. Background. He's talking about the brush pieces. Yeah. I wouldn't see it that way, but that's just me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Near total lunar eclipse. Uh, basic good story. Good use of colors. Uh, or distracting bright areas. It's a cool astrophotography image. Uh, does this qualify as astro? Not quite the same challenges as snagging a shot of the Milky Way, but I'm pretty sure the moon is in outer space. So why say it's astro? Anyway, cool concept. Focus is sharp enough, meaning good work on stabilization and exposure settings. The color is natural to me and something we don't really get to see very often in this contract. Mm -hmm. I'm immediately drawn to the overexposed area on the left of the moon's disk. I realize that given that most of the surface is in shadow and some of it is blazing at 10% the brightest brightness of the sun, that an even detailed exposure was pretty much impossible. But we're still a blown out section. Uh, two fixes, uh, graduated filter, and just a multiple down the left here. And the other one was uh, probably a, a composite uh, HDR type thing. So that was his thoughts about this. Next is Sunset in Paradise. Good use of cropping, sharpness in critical area, adds to impact, strong composition, removes the distracting element, he feels, and the hue needs adjustment. Needs adjustment. So let's get into this. He says, well, looks like a well-composed landscape, which might go either on projected image division or nature division with PSA. I think that's a strong compliment because uh, he, I know that he's responsible, been responsible for doing PSA judging. So uh, that's where the compliment comes from. As I said, composition is well done with the traceable line of the water course moving from foreground to a hint of it hidden from view in the mid-ground through the cut in the center and up to the foot of the mountain. The ridge lines help the impression and bring the eye to the water course. Shutter speed is just about right, in my opinion, creating an impression of both flow but retaining detail. The image is sharp all the way around to, to me, which can be challenging in the landscape, but when done well, it really adds. And I don't have the access. I'm going to leave that for everybody to look online. I'm sorry, but I didn't know I was going to do this. So. Okay, next is um, Lunch Watchers. Uh, let, me, let me take two seconds here.
Some of the typing. <laughs> <It's> showing. <laughs> Sounds like a little floral. Popcorn. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm trying to find it where I can actually see the whole thing. I'm okay. All right. We just move on. Okay. Do that. Um, Were you going to read that one though, or not? Well, I can't get. Read as much as I can. I'm having trouble getting it. I'll read. Okay. This is uh, Heather Tales. I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, this looked like an interesting nature image to me <sighs> at PSA Division Well, I think. I'll give the maker a name for creativity on the composition, and I really appreciate the very visible eye on the subject, which draws mine. Colors appear warm and natural to me. I know the maker was being creative with composition and trying to make lemonade out of lemons, since these guys probably don't take posing cues well. But the overlapping and merging placement of the two subjects detracts from both, I think. For instance, I can't really tell where the thumb of the animal's forehead ends and the other animal's haunch begins. This is uncertain. This uncertainty is exacerbated since it looks to me like the far animal is actually in better focus than the near animal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have information about him as the judge? The um, the other, last month they did. I yeah, that, that, none of the other judges have ever sent the bio. The only thing I know is from talking to him personally that he's been involved in uh, judging for national PSA stuff. Cool. Um, say ah, good use, uh, of, <laughs> good use of colors, light, and over sharpen. Looks like a still life floral shot to me. I think the yellow, orange, green split comp complementary color harmony works well. I feel like the veins in the flower act as good leading lines into the center of the image and to the sharpest area of the frame. Assuming that this is a macro shot or something close to it. Managing depth of field was, I'm sure, very challenging. I like macro myself, and I'm always making decisions about what I'm going to do about depth of field, whether or not I can afford a portion of the subject to be out of focus. And if so, what must be in focus? Given that the yellow structure of the stamen and pistol anthers, uh, clearly I'm no botanist, are centered, and a portion of it is in focus, I'm assuming it is the subject but it's not all in focus, and more importantly, the poor part of it is out of focus. And that was his uh, main critique about this image, plus he felt it was over sharpened. Uh, on arriving in Narnia, I feel like I know what the maker was going after here, which is the nice warm glow of a real flame in a snowy but not inhospitable environment. Can I get that right? Plus, I kind of remember those scenes from the films, so the title helped. I think the maker did a great job of capturing the falling snow with an appropriate shutter speed. The composition has strong aspects, such as the choice of backgrounds, which is appropriately blurred using depth of field, and the offset of the light from dead center. It's a great attempt to capture a mood. Uh, speaking of comp composition, I think this image would have a lot more impact if there were more an attempt to include or tell a story. How would I do that? I don't know. But some people in the scene might help. Otherwise, it's merely a light without much context, in my opinion. Beyond that, I'm right that there's a heavy vignette, or am I right that there's a heavy vignette of radial gradient around the periphery, uh, darkening the uh, edges? <laughs> Next is back up. You skipped one. Did I? There. Oh, I bet I thought that was what I was going to read. All right. This is a uh, wing of winter. Good use of colors. Original treatment of the subject. Sharpness in critical areas adds to impact. Too centered. And composition.
looks like an interesting macro, macro shot now that moth is sharp. We also make it. That does so much to direct the eye and add visual impact to me. Excellent tonality of the moth to my eye. Color harmony of the blue background and white foreground work well for me. And speaking of background, I really like the bokeh or bokeh. Color, shape, and placement of the background. I think it does a great job of silhouetting the subject and has a pretty original texture and color. I'm envious. Um, for me, the areas of improvement would be composition, story, and impact, which I feel are all related. We're not quite sure of the story here with the moth and feathers. So, uh, I'm mention a little bit more about composition, which I forget exactly what it's called. <laughs> Safety in numbers conveys a good story. Good use of colors. Sharpness in critical areas adds to the impact. The background is distracting. Also, there's some distracting bright areas and the subjects merge together. <coughs> this looks like an excellent capture for a nature image to me. I really appreciate the tonality. I can see in the subject's coats, which I think is probably enhanced by the soft reflected light from the animal's undersides. The whites look more white, I'm sorry, the whites look white to me, which is no small feat with snow. To me though, I think the story being told in what happened, what appears to be a defensive posture of the herd and the full frontal aspect of nearly all the animals really makes the image. And the way I read that makes sense. And, uh, I wish there was better separation between the animals in the front on the left and the larger animal behind it, but you know how it goes. <coughs> Fishing conveys a good story, displays a peak of action, instills an emotional reaction, sharpness in critical areas adds a good impact, strong composition, too dark. Okay, strong nature image in my opinion. I absolutely love the action captured here and the crispness of everything at this level of crop. Composition is strong for me with good placement of the subject in the frame. A nice pose and orientation of the subject and the cool flow of subject and spray from upper left to bottom right. The background and foreground are great for me and don't detract from the image at all. I kind of like the green tone too. Great capture. Uh, and the maker's going to have to read his suggestions online. Remember what they were. And so I should have. I'm sorry. I, I should have known. I didn't read your email. Okay. Um, this one's untitled. Um, the use of colors and cropping. Looks like a nice still life to me. And perhaps uh, ready for PSA projected image division, but probably not the nature version, which is just fine. Super colors, a really warm yellow orangey. There's probably a real name for this color. Petals and analogous dark green stand opposite the reddish purple of the center of the flower well, and what I think they'd call split complementary color harmony. Thank you, Richard. The center of the spot flowers is nice and sharp, is well exposed and really draws my eye. I really appreciate the composition placing the subject and the second subject, question mark, I guess that's part of the, oh yes, the blurred flower in the background. Uh, well in the frame with lots of, but not too much reading room. I also think the maker did a great job of separating these two items from the background with what appears to be a radial filter. So maybe some brushwork in post processing. Surf diving. This seems like a visually attractive nature image to me. The subject is beautifully sharp with tons of texture and detail. Excellent, excellent tonality and realistic colors. Good work. I love the arc of the primary flight feathers and the fully outstretched left wing. 
The entire bird, including the eye, seemed razor sharp, and that mattered. I think the ma maker did everything technically correct with the image. However, the bird's rear oblique aspect and their proximity to the very detailed active background present some challenges, in my opinion. Unfortunately, the right wing is almost invisible, which of course isn't the maker's fault, but birds have wings and you want to see them in all their glory. What's more, the sharpness and proximity of the background along with the division between white and green water inhibit the subject's separation from the background. Couple comments about that. But <coughs> as he was talking about it again, I don't, you know, don't know if I agree, but that's the judge's opinion. Uh, this one displays peak of action, original treatment, background is distracting, and distracting all. To me, this appears to be an interesting composite image of the subject itself, appears to be generally sharp, adding to the impact. The exposure works too, in my opinion. I like that the light appears to be coming from in front of the subject, illuminating the face, and that even though the underside of the near wing is in shadow, there is sufficient fill or boosted shadows to, pro to provide detail. For me, the best thing about the image is the composition, which captures the subject in a really dynamic pose and its clear, sharp eye. And I really love the simplicity of the composition. Um, now, this is just me talking, but I think the background pattern impinges on the separation that the subject would otherwise enjoy. And um, as I'm going to say, this is not a fan of the uh, treatment of this image. And the last image in this class interesting still life, in my opinion. I'm a real fan of using black backgrounds to highlight the beauty of flowers. And these blacks seem even and noise free to me. The analogous yellow green combo complements the reddish purple of the flower well, so kudos there. Backlighting the leaves produces a really vibrant green, which looks great against the black background. So I would really like to have the lower half of this leaf, which seems to trail off in the shadow and loses its color, as well lit as the upper half. It seems to me that the flower has a couple of hot spots on the verge of being overexposed as well. So maybe some more control over the quality and placement of light would alleviate these things. Beyond that, although, as I said, I like the colors, I'm not sure how the flower and the leaf are related. That's just my opinion. And that was <coughs> his main critique. All right, so judges' choices. We have <coughs> okay, honorable mention uh, goes to On the Hunt. Mark, is that some kind of a photo? <laughs> Cheryl, do you still think that your images don't look sharp? <laughs> Cheryl told me in a panic thing. I download, upload my images and they don't look right. They don't look sharp. Oh, gosh. Uh, you're super picky. <laughs> We're not looking at the same image, but uh, they look sharp and they're really gorgeous. So where was this? That was in uh, With a certain telephoto lens? That was actually a 70 to 200. Oh, that's, wow. wow. <laughs> Were you that close? Or really close? Or both? Is there good? I don't know. It could have been less. There was. Did you take multiple shots as it came down? You picked this one because it was. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. I just like the splash and that he got the fish oh, all sure. the same. And the, I'm a big thing on wing position. So that's why that one kind of gets chosen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well done. Right. 
And second place goes to Lou Ambalapia. Well, I personally didn't agree with the judge on the distracting lines. I think they, they if anything, help frame. Help frame. Yeah. Lou is on line. Well, Hello? can you hear me? Can you hear me? Lewis? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Well, I was in Yellowstone um, in uh, January and February, and this guy uh, paraded down the road, then went up on a hill and uh, went through a, a little area of snow. I have other pictures, other images where you can see the entire uh, coyote, but he's not looking at you. So I thought this was the, the better selection. Um, to be honest with you, I never even saw those, those lines in the snow. Um, I mean, if you're looking at that on the upper part of the image and you can see ones on the, the lower right third uh, also, right, exactly. So, I mean, he, he comments on the backgrounds on one being uh, too busy and then comments on another one having um, uh, nothing in, in the background. So this guy's all over the place with his comments. Yeah, I, uh, I, you know, like I said, I don't agree with that. I think it all just works really well having that hind quarter uh, covered up looks great to me and you're right having the animal look at you really yes. adds a lot yes the, the fur detail is fur. exquisite yeah that's great uh so well done thank you yeah. thank you and uh if you haven't submitted that to nature uh for the uh upcoming uh, inner club yeah, you can please do so okay we'll do um This was second place. Okay. And first place, oh, this is getting boring. Cheryl Callan. <laughs> this is the same eagle. You, just, you know, you pay him eight bows, whichever way you want. Beautiful. Tell us about this. That guy was on the beach. And I belly crawled up to him and he just sat there. Really? Yeah. Cool. That it was pretty much full frame. Excellent. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. The background is is just out of focus dark. Are you, you can... Yeah, it was there was black sand there. Oh. So I just made sure that there was black sand there. Where was this at? In yeah. Alaska. Uh, uh -huh. If I did that, I would have gotten my face taken off. I didn't know it. <laughs> that's why you have a big lens in front of you. Yeah, that's why I'm usually a good distance away. <laughs> well, I could see people going for Cheryl's face far sooner than yours. <laughs> Kudos getting down to eye level. Yeah. 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 She's You're a belly good. crawler. Yeah. Tell them about that. Tell them what you do. I couldn't get back up. I am a belly crawler. And how can you do it? It makes it more fun. Yeah. It's called a skimmer pod. And it's a skimmer pod. It looks like a, well, actually, I turned a free, uh, frying pan before I spent the money. You can turn a frying pan <laughs> into one. So basically, it's like a round circle, and your, your uh, head goes on top. Oh. And you literally crawl through the sand and Shoot birds. Oh. It's awesome. <laughs> Except you get wet and dirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can wear waders if you're so inclined. That's what I did. I'm looking forward to doing this one day. All right. Uh, let's look at what the people said. People have to speak. We want to talk about our theme next month and all that stuff. I will as soon as I do this. Uh, so the uh, People's Choice Bronze Award goes to Steve Burkich. I was wondering if that was a real photo. Yeah. And uh, feel free to feel free to uh, after that. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Paradise at uh, Mount Rainier. Was the grass that green? Yeah, it was. The sun was going down. About 10 minutes later, though, there was a big cloud bank on the other side of that ridge. About 10 minutes later, you didn't see any of that. It was, 
It's just that, rolled it's, in. It's that green because it's somebody else's yard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Washington. That was Olympics. last July. Wow. But yeah. there's still snow. Yeah. If you look, there's still some snow here and there. So that's yeah, very beautiful. Awesome. He barely crawls with bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Silver award goes to Sarah. Sarah. Okay. All right. Well, since we have all these nature pictures here, I, I'm going to make a comment about Interclub. Uh, I mean, I see lots of spectacular landscapes and nature from our club. Mm -hmm. But reviewing the winners in the nature division for the last two rounds, and I've gone through a lot of images. They're more than 10 to 1, they pick uh, wildlife over, over landscapes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just a fluke. They're not getting the landscapes they want, or the, or the, you know, the wildlife is just so phenomenal that they can't ignore it. I don't know. But if you're debating between entering a wildlife or a landscape or your nature shop, you know, if this helps make up your mind, you know, go with the animals. I've been using, I've been using my landscape shots to go in the pictorial, you know, the, uh, the PID, the pictorial image division, the projected image division, which is the open, you know, open team. So that's just, you know, my thoughts on that. So next month, the uh, theme is action. <laughs> Can we switch back to the group work? Oh, yeah. It's an action shot, right? Yeah, I'm sure she has some. She back. probably has some. Yeah. <laughs> what did you ask me to go to? Just back to the just back to the group gallery. Okay. Oh. So we can see who's watching us. Stop sharing. Oh. Stop sharing. I share too much, she says. Okay. Yeah, do gallery view. Group, group gallery. Yeah. You up in the right upper uh, yes. gallery. There we go. All right. Now I'm live. So, uh, what else did I have to say? You were going to talk about action. That's yeah, so action, obviously, an action shot where you either Freeze the action or blur the action on purpose. Those are all, you know, those are both trouble things. But if you find something else where action fits as a theme, we're going to mess around with that. Literally. Uh, but that being said, the judges need to get your point. Otherwise, you lose your chance of that. Um, again, I'm looking for more interclub uh, entries. Uh, the deadline is this Sunday night. So if you've got some images, and I know many of you do, because I saw them the night, uh, and, uh, send us some good ones so we can move up in the rankings. We get results back from the last. We got partial results. We got three categories and we're still waiting on two. So I'm going to wait till they're all done. We did get uh, one merit and one honorable mention award, um, but that's, you know, that's all I know. They're, I don't know why they're so slow this time. So they, you know, it's up to the, in, there's a club in each division that's responsible for the judging and they have to get it back to the supervisors and I don't know what's going on with that. But, so we're, you know, our club is kind of hanging in the middle of these, you know, of our group, which is, you know, the newest clubs. So, you know, we, which is no surprise because we don't know, you know, what kind of images they, they like and you know, what style they like. And take a lot of that. Uh, but in any case, I think that, you know, we can look forward, you know, we, and, and we've had kind of, very limited uh, participation from club members. This month, 
actually went through uh, winning images from the last 18 months and, and you know pick certain ones I knew we'd be short on and encourage people just to send in those images. But if I didn't send you something, a message, you just, you know what images you have that are good. Just please don't hesitate to, to send them in. We always need more uh, photojournalism images and uh, photo travel is also kind of short. So any of you that have been abroad, the photo travel actually, I guess technically doesn't mean abroad. It, it means that, you know, it shows the culture in a certain area of the people from a certain area. That yeah. could be cowboys in Texas. I mean, so. Uh, and you can send in stuff for the inner club. And, than two, yeah. and you can still send the same one in for competition. They're totally yeah. separate. Mm -hmm. okay. totally. Yeah. The one that you can't send one in one for inner club is images that have already been submitted to inner club. So don't submit the same image again. Um, but other than that, and there's no time limit on inner club. You know, in our, in our competitions, except for oldies, it's two years. You have to have the picture has to been taken within the last two years. For inner club, you can go through your whole library. So, uh, thank you. You want to recognize the judges again? I, I certainly do. I put my glasses and, on so I could recognize them. And, and make a pitch <laughs> for some more. <laughs> yes. I do have some volunteers are ready for next month, but not enough. So uh, Debbie Cole wasn't here tonight. Uh, she's out of town, but uh, she did a great job uh, with her comments, and we always appreciate her take on this. Uh, and she's a published author, as most of you know, and has uh, published a top book on photography. Two books on photography. Two. Uh, Karen Limbaugh. Karen, wave to everybody. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, as always, Interesting to hear Karen's take on images. I'm gonna have another club with her where she gets to speak more ad lib and uh, she really has good ideas about what makes images work. And uh, Patrick sends him. Okay. Uh, no, no. Well, your first time around. Yeah, good time for this. All the shoot. Good really well. Like most yeah. people have been looking at Alpha stuff yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Well, makes a difference. Yeah. And so you have you have people for next month? Not enough. So uh, please consider uh, signing up for judging next month or any other month of the year. Uh, just send me an email uh, because if you don't, yeah, maybe call me. So uh, and thank you all for attending tonight. And uh, I'm the membership secretary, and I just want to recognize that we had a new member joined tonight, and that was Sherry. Uh, new member we paid tonight is Sherry. So, welcome to the club. We also had a guest, and uh, so if you uh, introduce yourself to them, ask them what kind of photography they do, and invite them to come back next month. What's your name? Sherry. 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 Glad you came. All right. Well, Good night. Okay. Uh, yeah. Invite your invite your friends to next month uh, to Zoom uh, because we have a guest speaker. Two weeks. <laughs> In two weeks, we have a we have a speaker, Eric on um, astrophotography. Bill is going to introduce him. Right. Uh, you've done that. Uh, actually. It's April 21st. Yeah, I think Stephen recruited you. So oh, oh, Stephen? Okay, yeah. Stephen will. I'll do David Atubia. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get some technical.